the the difference in my life from before to here is about the the peace and serenity and the pace it's just a very very different energy people here are i mean the word tranquilo comes up all the time to describe uruguay and i think it's it's perfect the only time people are not tranquilo in uruguay is on the highway i'm about to talk to karen who is a former art gallery owner from new york she came to uruguay 10 times before she had a consultation with me to find out whether it, Uruguay would be a great place for her and her husband to come and live. In this interview, we talk about all sorts of things, including what it was like to renovate a house in Jose Ignacio, uh, or just outside of Jose Ignacio, where she lives, healthcare, how easy it's been to make friends, and what it's like to get around when you don't really speak that much Spanish. Okay, so I'm here with Karen who is from the States. Karen, tell me where you're from and when you moved to Uruguay. Hi, um, I'm from New York. I'm a born and raised New Yorker. And I first came to Uruguay in 2004. And I moved here with my husband in 2001, right in the middle of the pandemic. 2021. 2021. Oh, did I say 2001? 2021. Sorry. In the middle of the pandemic. Right. Okay. Now tell me why you decided to move here. Well, we both have always imagined living in another country. And we both had places that we had traveled that we liked, but I don't think anything um, really compared to the relationship that I had developed over the years of coming here. Um, I came here 10 different times over 18 years prior to moving here. Um, so I was pretty familiar with the general area in which we now live, which is the department Maldonado, um, specifically in the area of the beach communities that sort of stretch from Punta to Jose Ignacio. That sort of that whole stretch of beach was what I had become the most familiar with and only going north inland as far as Garcon, um, Aigua, a couple of other small, beautiful little towns that are about an hour from the coast. Um, and when we were thinking about where to go, and what our reasons for leaving the States were, Uruguay sort of hit all the right notes for us. We did some further research, starting with talking to you, and we decided it was gonna be the right place for us. But in my heart, I felt it from the first time I came here. Like, this is a place I think I would like to live. To find out more about a consultation with Guruguay, go to www.guruguay.com and hit consultations. And I have a special gift for you. If you book before the 31st of August, 2023, then you can get $100 off your first consultation. Just put in the coupon code KAREN100. It'd be great to work with you. Very cool. Now, you guys are retired, right? Um more or less. I mean, we both, neither of us have like jobs that we report to, but we both are involved in businesses and we have businesses that we manage, mostly real estate, but I was an art dealer and um, I still occasionally dabble in that, but we live more of a life of being retired. Okay, and otherwise working remotely from Uruguay. Correct. Cool. Can we get an idea of your typical week? What does that involve? What does that look like? Um, you know, it's still um, sort of defining itself because the first year that we were here, we spent our time doing all the things to become residents and we were taking Spanish class um, five days a week. 
and we were looking for a home and then we found one and we decided to buy something that needed to be remodeled. So we spent the second year doing the remodel. Um, there was a little um, galpon, which here is what you call like a barn or a garage. And we decided we were going to turn that into a guest house. And we made that project be our first project. So we moved into the guest house first while we waited for the main house to be renovated. And the renovation was a lot of very structural things. We needed a new roof. We needed new floors. Um, the house had been habited up until recently, but it was in disrepair. Hmm. Uh, and so about six months ago, we finally moved into the main house and started real life. Um, <laughs> and, you know, in the time that we were doing all the other things, like many magical things happened, like we started making friends we started making, having a social life here. Um, and I built a garden and Victor, my husband, built a music studio. And so we were sort of laying out, um, you know, sort of the map of what our life is going to look like. And we're just now really coming into that being how we live. So we're sort of seeing what our week might look like. Um, Victor's in his music studio right now. We just got back from California and he had some equipment that was in disrepair and we had to bring it back to California and get it back down here, which was no easy task. But so he's in there now, almost like after it being built, it's been built for a number of months and he's really now like digging in. Um, and my, you know, the Huerta and the sort of farm that we're in the process of creating, that's going to be a forever project. That's going to be just a part of the day-to-day -day business from here on in, but we do other normal things. We go to the gym and we go for beautiful walks on the country roads that we live on, or we go to the beach and we, you know, do things. There's, there's only a very small amount of things that we would have be doing on a day-to-day -day basis in the States that we don't do here. It's a similar kind of life just in a, in a very different place. Sure. Um, can you tell me what has surprised you for good about Uruguay? Maybe because you were quite familiar. You said you made 10 trips beforehand, but it is different coming as a visitor compared to living, especially building a house. And uh, so, so what's different about living here? Um, what yeah, what has surprised you about life in Uruguay? Maybe that you didn't expect. I think that um I'm I'm surprised by um, how patient and cooperative and um, generous the, the people are on a, like just on the day-to-day -day basis of getting things done in life. We, 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 we come upon challenges all the time. And it's beyond language. I mean, language definitely is a factor, but we assume things are done the same way. And that has nothing to do with language. The first time you go into a hardware store and you see that first you have to talk to one person and then you have to go someplace else to get it written up. And then you go to a third place to pay. And then you have to go to a fourth pay place to take your package away and you just bought four light bulbs. It's that's crazy, but it's the way it's done here. And it's done here in all the different stores and it's done that way for a reason. And it's not my job to question the reason, which by the way, is one of the most important things that we came here with in the forefront is that we are not here to change Uruguay. We are here for Uruguay to change us.
we we want to be part of the community. We do not want to think expect that we have, it to change, or, or or think that we have a better way. Like I mean, just because it's what we're familiar with, if we if we thought that was the best way, we should have stayed put. Like we came <laughs> to enjoy how things are done here, and and exp- and take it in because things work here. I mean. No, no place is perfect, but things work here very nicely. We see that. So in going through, going back to your question, we came here not knowing how things get done. And I come from fast paced New York where people can be friendly and helpful, but they don't have a lot of patience and they don't have a lot of time. And the quality of life here. I think is better in some part because of that part of life here, that people are not so harried, not so impatient, um, don't have that time is money attitude. It's, It's very different. And for all the time that I'd come here prior, I was here as a tourist. I was here on vacation. So I just was not having the same kinds of experiences when you're going to the doctor or being in a um, an Antel office trying to get your phone to work properly or, you know, other um, sort of institutional places. Mm-hmm. We, when we bought our house, we had to get our water tested and um, we had to go into Maldonado to the water testing office, whatever. And like I could have sat and had a conversation with the two people that worked there for a half an hour. They were so sweet and so helpful and they didn't speak English and I didn't speak enough Spanish, but we got through it all. And they were generous with their time and they were not impatient with us. And I could rattle off a hundred examples like that. Mm, That's really great. What is, let's go to the converse. So um, what has surprised you that, uh, you know, is not great about life in Uruguay? What's, What's annoying, frustrating? So there's there's only one thing that we talk about regularly that is annoying, frustrating, disappointing, something like that. And, you know, there's very little um, diversity here in the people. Um, the people are largely Uruguayan or Argentinian. And then in the area that we live in, there's a handful of expats that are not running businesses or, you know, they're, they're like us, they're here to live and, and be a part of the community. There are no ethnic restaurants here. (laughs) to speak of. And the ones that are here tend to be not with a staff of people from the country in which the food is meant to come from. So, you know, there's not great Asian food here. There's not great Mexican food here. There's not I, I mean, we we miss Indian food. We miss spicy food. And I'm not saying there's not great food in Uruguay. There is. The style of cooking and the quality of food here is very, very good. And for all my times coming here, I was so over the moon with the food here. But now that I'm here for two and a half years, I'm like, I really want curry. <laughs> well, you've got to come to Montevideo more often. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because we lived in Montevideo for three months, but it was during COVID. So we did not have a good food experience. In, I mean, we just, I still don't feel like I know Montevideo. Right. I mean, yeah. No, because I was, I was just thinking, um, 
it's definitely something that uh, I think the point that you make when there is Mexican food here, but it's not prepared by a Mexican and it's often for Uruguayan tastes. Correct. So, yeah. It's spicy. It's not, it, it's missing something. It's not that it's not good. Although I have had some pretty wacky things. We were really pointed to a Mexican restaurant in, um, in Montevideo when we were there that we went to twice. And both times we were like, this really is not Mexican food. Now we're coming from California <laughs> from Mexican California. food is almost as good as the Mexican food in Mexico. But I mean, they had falafel on the menu and I'm like, I'm sorry, that's there, there's no Mexican restaurant that has a falafel on the menu. That's wacky. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, we 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 think the food here and the way the restaurants, especially in the area where we live, are wonderful. I mean, the use of fire and the fact that you can eat outside and they cook outside in these beautiful open kitchens is fantastic and the fresh fish and the fresh produce and the the um sort of heritage of so many of the people here is italian and so that what they infuse in the food that way is is all good but i i didn't i didn't consider the the lack of variety and yeah yeah no it's it's definitely true there's definitely an um an influx of more foreigners coming now and certainly from the caribbean um right now which is right. you know starting to make some difference um I can't wait for the cuban restaurant i know <laughs> the cuban restaurant down the street from us in la <laughs> There you go. Well, like I said, you have to come to Montevideo soon. Yeah. Okay. So um, you did mention making friends, and I wanted to ask you, how easy is it to make friends? Uh, remarkably easy. Remarkably easy. Um, we happen to have a great connector in right in our midst, someone that you connected us to. So I guess that makes you the great connector. Um, our real estate agent has been just invaluable in terms of what it's what she has single-handedly done to us for our social life and it's not to say we only meet people through her but we've met a tremendous amount of people through her and then if you're socially inclined which i am you sort of network out from there um we made friends um easier and faster here than I did when I moved to California. It's really been phenomenal. And we have friends that are um, Uruguayan and Argentinian and from numerous places in Europe and met a couple of other Americans that we like very much and Canadians. Um, it's just been fantastic. Now, you're in Jose Ignacio, which attracts an international crowd. Um, the friends that you've made um, are, are a lot of those people, people that just come for the summer and then they leave or people that are there throughout the year? Um, it's a combination. We, we, we've met all of the above. So um, I don't actually consider that I live in Jose Ignacio. Like we're like okay. sort of adjacent, you know, we're much more in the campo and where we are. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are surrounded by, um, you know, cattle farms and uh, agricultural businesses and our immediate neighbors are um, few. We, we don't have that many people that are close to us, but because of sort of that we're in the middle of, this farmland, we have San Carlos to the north and Manantiales to the west and Jose Ignacio to the east. And there's lots of little communities wedged in between that. And I'm blown. We meet people from places that I wouldn't have expected. And we meet them 
Sometimes you're in a restaurant and you start talking. And we do go to the gym in um, Jose Ignacio. And we've made a couple of friends there at yoga class. I met a really fantastic friend. I mean, this is a crazy story, but she's she's in Uruguayan. And I met her because I picked her up hitchhiking. And I've picked up hitchhikers my whole life. I mean, I'm not reckless. And she was- And I've also hitchhiked as well. <laughs> I picked her up. It was drizzling. And she was late for a doctor's appointment and she was waiting for the bus and I picked her up and I immediately apologized as she got in the car for my poor Spanish. And she just said to me, do you speak English? I used to live in New York. <laughs> and that was two years ago. And Beatrice is one of, I consider her one of my best friends here. She's a wonderful person. She left Uruguay, and I her her story many times. She left Uruguay for twenty years and could not wait to come back. Oh, you know, oh. left in, I think she probably left in her late twenties. She was pursuing career, and she was like, "Enough of this. I want to go back to my family, a solid community." And she's very happy back here. And she grew up. Um, not in this area, but now she lives in Manantialis. Oh. And so the people that we meet here are from all over and they're um, from all different walks of life. You know, the people in Jose Ignacio tend to be more uh, just seasonal. It's one of, it's probably more than any other community here. It really shuts down in the off season with the exception, right. you know, one or two businesses, it's, it really feels boarded up. Mm -hmm. But the other places uh, are where, you know, a, there's a general population that continues well, to live there. There are schools, etc. All of the above. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, this is kind of attached to the friendship aspect, but it's also, you know, you, you guys renovated a house. Um, how easy has it been to manage with, you know, not perfectly fluent Spanish? Well, we have a perfectly fluent in English architect. And he, I don't know how we would have done it without him. Our contractor spoke decent English. Um, I wouldn't say he was fluent, but we had a pretty good rapport with him. And then... Um, the jefe on our crew, who was Brazilian, we we were able to communicate with him pretty well. You know, Google Translate works for everybody. I mean, we've had carpenters and electricians come here and they pull out their phone and they talk into Google Translate and we get the job done. So they talk into Google Translate into Spanish and then you read it out in, in English? How does that work? You don't even have to read it out. They can do it audio where the automated voice translates the, the answer. But I mean, that's in a pinch. But I mean, we built our house and we are very, very happy with the result. I mean, as happy as I am with any project that I've ever, you know, been involved in. Great. But obviously finding an English speaking architect, that was a, a goal, as they say yeah. here. Yes. Um, but in, in general, on a day to day basis, because um, I know that you guys take classes and you're very serious about getting integrated. But I, yes. I think that you said to me that, you know, your Spanish is kind of like fairly limited. It is. And and so how, how do you how do on a day-to-day -day basis, how is that? Is it necessary, you know, to have a Spanish? Um, I don't think it's necessary, but we want to be fluent. I mean, we want to have real relationships with local people and not just superficial, you know, you, you want, I want to be able to converse. Um, but in where we live, it is not necessary because it is so international here. English is the international language, like it or not. And when you go into, especially in season, it's a little different off season. 
but in season, every restaurant, every market, there's someone who works in the establishment who speaks English. And, you know, I think that the younger people that tend to have these jobs, whether it's servers in a restaurant or behind the counter at a panaderia, they're all watching movies and they're all listening to pop music and they all speak English, at least enough. Yeah, yeah, it's things have definitely changed in Uruguay. The area that you're based in, um, you know, the Maldonado, the Jose Ignacio area is quite different to the rest of the country and even Montevideo as well. Um, but that's that's really that's really interesting to, to hear how broadly you're finding it uh, English being spoken. I um, we we use a number of businesses regularly, mostly the, the panaderias. There are two panaderias, one in Manantialis. Baker, and one, bakeries for our for our listeners that don't speak Spanish. <laughs> one one in uh, La Juanita. And both of them are open year round and they both have cafes where you can go for lunch as well or just go in for coffee for breakfast, but they have seating as well as you go in and buy your baguette or your focaccio. And the store in Manantialis, La Linda, that I go into at least once a week, the three girls behind the counter who are lovely and consistently there, it took me almost half a year before I realized that they all spoke English. All three of them speak English. I would cobble together my sentences, my requests, and they would very politely serve me and speak in Spanish. And then like, I think one day, like, I just kind of walked in and another English speaker was in there and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> and it was so great to see this and to, because a lot of people in restaurants or in that sort of situation, they jump in and to be helpful, speak English and you're like, I want to practice. <laughs> well, they want to practice too. So that's the funny thing. So, but these women in this store were not unusual. Like they, I mean, they were unusual in that they let me speak my bad Spanish and they managed to get me the right things all the time. But yeah, I think a lot of people um, of a certain age, I think it's definitely the numbers are very different with the younger community than with people who are middle-aged and older. They just are less likely. I, I guess also depends on what your professional career is. But here, I worry that there's too much English being spoken and that it's slowing down my ability to, you know, out of laziness. I'm not blaming it on the community, but if you can go into the store and you don't need help or somebody is eager to help you in English, you take it. Right, 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 right. Well, it's interesting to hear, though, because it's not um, so common in other parts of Uruguay, for sure. So I wanted to ask you, because this is going to be super uh, important, useful information to people watching about your experience uh, regarding health care in Uruguay. Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. When um, I have two um, chronic uh, illnesses that are not particularly serious, but I take medication for. So I needed to get that squared away very quickly so that I could get my prescriptions refilled. Um, I came with a three month supply when I first arrived. So I was under the gun and we were able to get coverage in Montevideo very, very quickly. Um, and it was insanely affordable by the standards that we were used to in the States. Um, we were with um, a, a mutualista is what you call the 
Yeah, it's like a healthcare institution, isn't it? Right. So the the mutualista we were in was Española, which is one of the biggest ones from what I understand. And it was institutional, but it was fine. Like the things we needed to get done, we got done. Right. Um, I was able to get my prescriptions filled and um, I didn't feel like it was being done um, without care. I had to see specialists and review my the reasons for my needs. And I, I felt very confident that we were getting adequate health care. I say adequate, not as a negative. I wasn't looking deeper at that point. I didn't have any urgency. And at that point, I still had health care in the United States. So I was not very concerned. But once we decided where we were going to be living and moving out of Montevideo, we had to look more seriously for what was going to be, you know, our long-term situation. We wanted to make sure we were going to have care as we got older and as our, if, if, when our needs became more serious. And so we did our research. We joined a mutualista out here. Um, the older you are, the more expensive it becomes to step in. Um, but we found something that we thought was extremely well priced, especially given the service we've we have. Can we you give me an idea of price? Sure. The mutualista that we are with here is called Mautone. And so there's a hospital that is the anchor for the service. And Many of the doctors that we see are through the hospital, but if something you need is not at the hospital, they go outside. And this is all included in your monthly payment. We also um, opted for what I would call concierge service. I don't think that that is the word that they use, but that would be the equivalent in the States. So. We have a WhatsApp number that we write into to tell them what kind of an appointment we need, what our reason is, whether it's a referral or if it's like a new symptom. And we generally can get an appointment within a matter of a few days. Oh. Um, uh, and when things are urgent, you have... Um, and I don't mean urgent, like where you need an ambulance, but where you have something acute. Um, they might have a telemed person call you right away, a doctor that you'll do a phone call with to determine something further needed. Um, anyway, we've had a number of minor things that we've really needed health care for through this, including when my husband got COVID, he was very sick with COVID and we had house calls twice um, during his two weeks of being in bed with COVID. Um, and our monthly cost is $250 each for our service. And that includes kind of everything. I mean, there are some very minor co-pays that come into play, but when I say minor, I mean like I had to have an MRI. I was having really really bad pain in my in my neck and they did a an MRI and I think my copay was like $15. Yeah. Um but that was an exception. You know, they also did a x-ray, which there was no copay. And you, when you go to, and I went to see a neurologist and there was no copay, you know, it, these are all things that are all included. And this Maltone, um, uh, it's called Maltone Pass is the name of the service. It's a special department within Maltone. That payment of two fifty a month was compared to the um, cost that we had at Española, which was, if I'm not mistaken, it was sixty three dollars a month, mm -hmm. and that was we didn't have the same service in terms of getting an appointment within a couple of days, but I suspect if there was something, an emergency, 
I don't know how they would have handled that. But um, I feel like the coverage here is very good. The care is very good. Um, I've seen the inside of the hospital from different perspectives. And I think I, I feel very comfortable about having, you know, treatment here. And how long does it get you take you to get to from where you live to the hospital? Um, it's about 25 minutes. Okay, that's great. Um, yeah. And I know that when you arrived, you were over 60 at that point. And normally that's a cutoff, isn't it, in, in yeah. uh, the healthcare system. How did you manage to get past that? What's the system there? I, I, I don't really... I think we're paying more. I think that if you're younger, it would be less than two fifty a month. I think it's that okay. simple. Um, I, I think that the other thing that you might know more about this than me, but I just my feeling is is that Uruguay is open to having people from other countries come live here, as opposed to the place that I come from that is not open to it. So I think that there's just an overall attitude of making expats feel welcome and part of the community. And, you know, it's not so rule oriented. Like, yes, over 60, maybe there's a, a, a fee or something, and which is warranted because you're more inclined to drain the system, use the system. You're older, you have more health care issues. But we have not, um, we didn't do anything to jump through a hoop. I mean, a couple of companies or mutual East has turned us down. The British hospital would have taken us, but that would have been at a very, very high cost that we didn't think warranted it. Right, right. Okay, great. Well, thank you. I'm, this That's really helpful. So just to round up um, on the more detailed questions, if there was one piece of advice that you would give the Karen that was leaving the States before she came here, what would it be regarding being here? <laughs> um, the piece of advice I would give would be to pack better for what you think your, your long-term needs are going to be. I mean, I am still going back to the States and bringing very funny things back that are, and they're, it's, it's your personal things. It's not, you know, things that you can't find here. It's things that you miss and you need, like things that you want around you. I knew somebody who said that she would have totally, because she came with a bunch of very expensive high heeled shoes that she never oh, yeah. wore once she got to Uruguay and said that she would have brought some really good solid cookware with her instead and left those at home. Yeah, I, I've been everybody's been making fun of me on this last trip back. I brought my juicer back with me. <laughs> I think it's perfect and it's totally understandable. <laughs> right. Well, I've got a few questions that I just want to ask you in like a rapid fire round now. Okay. okay so yes. I'm just going to um, give you just a, a, a topic. And then I want you to tell me in 30, uh, 30 seconds or less um what comes to mind okay. okay so life and if you can repeat what i've said so life in uruguay is so if you can say life in uruguay is and then okay all right so life in uruguay is life in uruguay is tranquilo simple uncomplicated and beautiful that's lovely. The cost of living is much more affordable than where I come from and what I expected. <laughs> okay, great. As a vegetarian, as a vegetarian, Uruguay has made my life much more interesting and 
simple, and it works. Tell me a bit more about that. Well, I have 20 years of history here, so I saw how it changed over the years. There is a very, very big community, again, younger people that are not only vegetarian, that are vegan, and they're being proactive. They're making products and beautiful vegan cheeses and tofu is widely available and the produce here is good. So like I said, things are more, less complicated because of the way people's flavor palettes and cooking styles are here. You're not going to find like the Indian curries and the Thai curries and spicy flavors to offset what you're missing from meat on the grill. But the quality of food here is very good and it's changed tremendously since I started coming. I mean, the produce here and the quality of, and we live in near the water. So we actually now eat fish. Um, we started eating fish here, but I went to the guy down the road from me who has a stand in his driveway. And I bought two gorgeous Corvina fillets that I'm going to cook in my horno tonight. And it was 400 pesos. That's like right, five dollars. So Right. So like $10 for two amazing pieces of fish, fresh. No, $5. Four, oh, 200 pesos. I'm sorry. 200 pesos. Oh, my God. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Uruguay wine. Oh, hello. Fantastic. Fantastic. Give me a Tanat. Give me a Rosé. The wine here is so beautiful, and I've gotten to know so many winemakers directly now. It's wonderful. Um, art in Uruguay. Art in Uruguay is very sophisticated, very available, and very connected with our social life. Tell yeah. A bit more. Well, I was an art dealer for 20 years. So we have the the Achugari Foundation here is just a gift that everyone in the country should know about. And if you're coming to Uruguay for a visit, you must make the journey. It's the most beautiful new building and the most gorgeous, I don't know, 100 acre sculpture park. It's so beautifully designed and conceived. And they have events there all year long, beautiful movie screenings and music performances and big outdoor fairs. And most weekends, there's something to do there. It's fantastic. We go there without expecting. We run into friends who live in other parts of the country. And it's, it's great. And the last one. The biggest difference between my life in the States and my life now? Oh, it's, it's peace. I mean, the, the difference in my life from before to here is about the, the peace and serenity and the pace. It's just a very, very different energy. People here are, I mean, the word tranquilo comes up all the time to describe Uruguay, and I think it's it's perfect. The only time people are not tranquilo in Uruguay is on the highway. People I here <laughs> drive much too fast. Behind the wheel. Much too fast, and they are very, yeah. Uh, that I... <laughs> Probably I, I should have put that in one of my other complaint piles. <laughs> the speed in which people drive. I drive like a granny. I am not a fan. Okay, so thanks to working with Guru Wai, it was really heartwarming to be able to interview Karen in her dream house. In the show notes, you'll find the URL to learn how to work with Guru